Good morning. My name is Gigi. August 5, 2020. Prophet G, my message to the president of Lebanon, Michael Aoun. My message is concerning the explosion that happened in the port. The prophets I have since 2019, June 20, but I will not release because it's explosion that happened is happened caused by people who works in the port. They are angry of financial challenge in their place of working. We are continuing to pray for a nation Lebanon in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. My name is Gigi. August 5, 2020, Prophet G, my message to the President of Lebanon, Michael Aoun. My message is concerning the explosion that happened in the port. The prophets I have since 2019, June 20, but I will not release because it's explosion that happened, is happened caused by people who work in the port. They are angry of financial challenge in their place of working. We are continuing to pray for a nation Lebanon in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. They stood their ground in the face of power. <laughs> Relentless tear gas by security forces, at times live ammunition. But protesters didn't leave. Too angry at a political class they blame for Tuesday's blast that killed dozens and destroyed and damaged many neighborhoods in the Lebanese capital. The authorities were aware that thousands of tons of highly explosive material was stored at the Beirut port for years. We have survived the explosion, but part of all of us has died, to be honest. But what can we do? I am one of the fortunate ones who can leave and establish myself outside, but all these people cannot. So what can we do? What they did was return to the streets. They have been demanding a new leadership for months. Many were injured in running battles that lasted for hours. But this time, they say they won't be silenced. They want justice and revenge for the victims of the explosion and believe a government-led inquiry into the disaster won't hold senior officials accountable. We are not leaving. It's either them or us in this country. And you know what? The people always prepares, and we will fight. We want revenge, and our revenge is by putting all the political class either, either on, on, on the hanging stools you see over there or in the dustbins, but we want them out. Protesters also storm three ministries. State institutions, people say, are run by corrupt politicians who they blame for draining the state's treasury. They say they want a state and a competent government. Currently, Lebanon's institutions are controlled by political parties and there is a parallel state run by the Iranian-backed Hezbollah. The Prime Minister, Hassan Dieb, who took office early this year, is now offering a way out of the crisis. <laughs> We cannot face these problems unless we have early elections to elect new politicians and a new parliament. We need a new political elite and a new parliament. We need to work together to overcome this difficult period. We know and I know the people have questions about the catastrophe and how the government plans to handle it. The catastrophe is way bigger than anyone could imagine. The impact may stay forever. Early elections have been one of the opposition's demands, but there are concerns. The sectarian-based political system and electoral law won't give independent candidates a chance. The early elections is good, is a good step, but I'm afraid that the political parties, are, they still have the power over the people, and uh, it's all about the system. Like, I'm afraid that they will have this, we will have the same people again. It's not the first time central Beirut turns into a battleground between the people and the establishment. The struggle for change is not new. The anger has been building for years. Many feel those in power caved in by proposing early elections. The governing alliance is not just facing pressure from the street. The state is nearly bankrupt and the international community won't help unless politicians fight state corruption. For now, many people here feel they won a round in what is likely to be a long battle. Zena Khudr Al Jazeera, Beirut.